वेलकम टू विद्यामित्र सिद्धपेट इन टूडेज लेसन वी विल रिवाइज रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ लाइट एट कर्ड सर्फिस पार्ट वन लाइट इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी विच कॉजेज सेंसेशन ऑफ विजन इफ देर इज एनी सोर्स ऑफ लाइट देन द लाइट फ्रॉम द सोर्स फॉल्स ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड देन इट गेट्स रिफ्लेक्टेड इन टू अर आईज एंड देन वी विल बी एबल टू सी द ऑब्जेक्ट्स लाइट ट्रेवल्स इन स्ट्रेट लाइन्स and light traveling in one direction is called light ray if all the light rays are parallel to each other we call them parallel light rays if the light rays are starting from a point then we call them diverging light rays if the light rays are going to meet at a point we call them converging light rays now let us look at the loss of reflection of light if a light ray is incident on a surface the point at which the light ray is incident we call it point of incidence the incident ray will get reflected we call this reflected light ray an imaginary line perpendicular to the surface at point of incidence is called normal the first law says the incident ray normal reflected ray all the three lie in the same plane if you rotate this table we can see that the incident ray normal and reflected ray they are in same plane the second law of reflection the second law of reflection says that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection i should be equal to r let's revise the characteristics of images formed by plane mirrors if we observe the image is formed by plane mirrors we can see that the image will form at the same distance as the object from the mirror also the size of the image is equal to the size of the object the third characteristic is the images will be erect that is the top will remain top the bottom will remain bottom the fourth characteristic is the images are laterally inverted left appears to be right and right appears to be left next is the image formed by a plane mirror is virtual virtual means the image cannot be captured on a screen now let's discuss spherical mirrors we see in our day to day life spherical mirrors at various places this is a mirror kept on the road side this is a convex mirror used in a vehicle this is a concave mirror which is used in a telescope this is extremely large telescope present in atacama desert in chile you can see how big the mirror is look at the trucks and cars which are near the entrance which are so tiny when compared to the mirror here this telescope is used to observe celestial objects in the space in our day to day life we observe spoons spoons also act as spherical mirrors they also form images when they are new and as you are using the spoons they lose the luster and they become dull so you can observe that the spoons are forming images on the right side the image is erect on the left side the image is inverted spherical mirrors are part of a sphere so the mirror which is made from a sphere is a spherical mirror if we paint on the outer surface it is called the concave mirror the inner surface will act as a mirror it's a concave mirror if we paint the inside then the external surface will act as a mirror this is convex mirror so let's discuss concave mirror the middle of the mirror is called pole pole of the mirror the center of the sphere of which mirror is a part is called center of curvature the line joining center of curvature and pole of mirror is called principal axis the distance between the pole of the mirror and the center of curvature is called radius of curvature 
the length of the mirror is called aperture in this chapter we assume that aperture is much smaller than the radius of curvature now imagine a light ray which is parallel to principal axis is incident on the concave mirror after reflection it passes through a point on the principal axis if we consider another light ray this also gets reflected in such a way that it passes through the same point on the principal axis so all the light rays which are parallel to principal axis when they are incident on the mirror pass through a point on the principal axis which is called focus principal focus and the distance between principal focus and pole is called focal length using the assumption that aperture is much smaller than the radius of curvature we can prove that radius of curvature is twice the focal length that is r is equal to 2f let us solve a numerical radius of curvature of a concave mirror is 20 cm find the focal length we know r is equal to 2f so substituting the value of radius of curvature 20 is equal to 2f f is equal to 20 by 2 so it's 10 cm let's solve another numerical radius of curvature of mirror is 50 cm so find the focal length so r is equal to 2f so substituting the value 50 is equal to 2f f is equal to 50 by 2 which is 25 cm let's solve another numerical focal length of concave mirror is 22 cm find the radius of curvature r is equal to 2f so r is equal to 2 times 22 which is 44 cm now let us revise the rules to draw ray diagrams in case of a concave mirror a light ray passing parallel to principal axis incident on the concave mirror passes through focus after the reflection when light ray passes through focus after reflection it passes parallel to principal axis the third rule when light ray is passing through center of curvature after reflection it retraces the path that is it gets reflected in the same direction the fourth rule when light ray is incident on the pole it gets reflected in such a way that the angle between the principal axis and the incident ray will be equal to the angle between reflected ray and the principal axis here principal axis is the normal at pole and hence the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so let us revise all the four cases light ray which is passing parallel to principal axis passes through principal focus after reflection light ray which passes through focus after reflection comes out parallel to the principal axis light ray which is passing through center of curvature gets reflected in the same direction and the last when the light ray is incident at the pole it gets reflected in such a way that the angle with principal axis is same now using these rules let us draw the image of an object which is present here that is beyond center of curvature to find the image formed we have to select any two of the rules four rules repeat to find the image formed by the concave mirror we have to select any of the two rules from the four repeat to find the image formed by the concave mirror we have to select any two light rays from the tip of the object so i will select a light ray which is parallel to principal axis which is coming from the tip of the object and after reflection it has to pass through principal focus the second light ray which i am going to choose is 
the light ray which passes through focus after reflection it has to come out parallel to the principal axis now where the light rays meet there the image is formed if we see the image is inverted it is smaller in size and it's a real image so the nature of the image is real inverted and diminished diminished means smaller in size the position of the object is beyond c here and position of the image is between f and c so using the rules to draw ray diagrams we can find the image of the object formed by the concave mirror so in the next class we will discuss various cases that is the object placed at different positions and the image is formed now let's move on to convex mirror for convex mirror the center of curvature and the focus are on the right side of the mirror let us see the rules to draw ray diagrams in case of convex mirror when light ray is parallel to principal axis is incident on convex mirror it gets reflected in such a way that it appears to come from focus so any light ray which is parallel to principal axis when it is incident on the convex mirror they appear to come from focus any light ray which is parallel to principal axis when it is incident on a convex mirror it gets reflected in such a way that it appears to come from focus so any light rays which are parallel to principal axis incident on the convex mirror they appear to come from focus the second rule when the light ray is incident on the convex mirror in such a way that it is directed towards center of curvature it retraces its path after reflection so using these two rules we can draw the image formed by the convex mirror now let us draw the image formed by the convex mirror consider an object which is in front of the convex mirror draw a light ray which is directed towards center of curvature it retraces its path let us draw another light ray which is parallel to principal axis this appears to come from focus where these light rays appear to meet there the image is formed because the rays do not actually meet they only appear to meet so a virtual image is formed this is not a real image we cannot capture it on the screen and the image is smaller in size and it is virtual and it is erect so wherever may be the object in front of the convex mirror the image is always formed between focus and pole nature of the image is virtual erect and highly diminished so children let us revise the other topics in the next class thank you